Welcome to a deeper dive into reliability analysis for repairable systems. In this series of videos, we'll explore descriptive statistics for recurrence analysis of repairable systems, statistical inference, and measuring reliability growth. Before viewing these videos, it's helpful if you have an understanding of component reliability or reliability analysis for non-repairable systems. In this first video, we'll take a look at recurrence analysis, discuss how system reliability differs from component reliability, describe the data structure for recurrence analysis, and define the mean cumulative function and intensity function. The JUMP platform that is used to analyze data from repairable systems is the recurrence platform. Recurrence analysis is used to study reliability for repairable systems, also just called system reliability. Repairable system reliability differs from non-repairable system reliability, also called component reliability. In non-repairable systems, the interest is in the lifetime of components of systems or systems that are removed from service after their life ends. Their lifetimes are described using distributions like the Weibull or LogNormal in the Life Distribution platform. Repairable systems are not removed from service when they fail. Instead, they are repaired and put back into service. Instead of measuring their lifetime, you will study the number of repairs and when they occurred. The models used to understand repairs over time are renewal processes and other stochastic processes. The data for system reliability come from a counting process. The response counts the cumulative number of events, for example, repair events, up to time t. A counting process is a step function that steps up one unit every time an event occurs. The goal of recurrence analysis is to estimate the mean cumulative function, or MCF. This function is called C of t. C of t gives the total cost per unit through time t. Cost is measured via either the number of events or the actual costs of events. A linear MCF plot is consistent with a constant failure rate. Curvature in this plot indicates that the reliability is either improving or degrading. The derivative of the MCF is the intensity function I of t. I of t gives the repair rate or rate of occurrence of failures or Rokoff at time t. Now data should be in a table with one row for every observed event. You can see here that engine 328 has four rows. Three are repair events, and one is a closing row with last observed age. Three columns are required, the label for each system, the unit's age at the time of an event, or the time at end of service, and a cost column containing either a one, or the cost of the repair, and a zero for the row at the end of service. The cost column can contain either count data or cost data. If counting events, the cost column will contain a 1 for each repair event and a 0 for the end of service event. The MCF is the mean cumulative count of events by age. If tallying costs, the cost column will contain the cost of the repair for each repair event and a 0 for the end of service event. The MCF is mean cumulative cost by age. Separate MCF estimates can be obtained for different groups of units. JUMP provides the ability to indicate multiple failure modes by the causes of the failure. You can also accommodate non-zero starting time with an initial timestamp. The end of service time can be indicated in different forms. And you can scale the recorded age to transform lifetime units. Graphical analysis of recurrence data can be done by an event plot. The y-axis represents each system in the study. The x-axis represents the age of the system. Dots mark repair events. The size of the dot represents the cost. Lines represent the lifetime of the system until last recorded age. 
we're done with talking about the basics of recurrence analysis and the mean cumulative function. In the next video, I'll demonstrate how to get the MCF from the recurrence platform in JUMP.